when we're talking about um, well, this most recent race, I remember being blown away by the the you know statistics of like how where it was and how long it was. Can you explain it to the audience? I guess for so so. And that's the thing. It's like when you look at just the figures itself, it's mind-blowing just to wrap your mind around it. So it's 4,500 kilometers. It's the record currently is like 14 days, which obviously when they started the race, they never thought 10 years ago that someone could ever do it in that, in that time. Yep. Um, it involves 30, <clears throat> I think it's like 37 mountain passes. Mm-hmm. So you go over 37 mountains. See. The highest altitude is, well, I suppose if you go to Nepal and stuff, it's probably not that high. But if you're someone like me that lives at the beach, it is high. It's uh, 3,600 meters. Oh, is, yeah, is that's it, definitely high. Is quite high, yeah. That's high for anyone, really. Yes. And not not and, every space camp high, obviously, but that's yeah. high, especially for sport. Especially for sport and especially when you're like pushing yourself, your body's under a, an, oh, yeah. an in, increased, yeah, increased amount of stress. Um, they have roughly 200 starters. When it when that started 10 years ago, it, they had 10 or 15. So it's, yeah. it's, that shows you the explosion and the participation rate. So out of 200 starters, approximately 50 or 60 finished. Really? Wow. Um, I, yeah, I think I came about 30th or something like that. And I also race at single speed, just as a side note. So I race it without gears. Yep. So there's like a separate classification. Um, Why'd you do that? Challenge. That was the only bike I had. <laughs> yeah, right. I only had one had gear. I was like, yeah. had a flat on the, on the other bike. <laughs> um, so yeah, when you when you try and wrap your head around it, it's like just on those figures alone, you're like, it's impossible. But it's amazing, providing that you've got food. And water, it's surprising how how far you can push yourself. Yeah, mm. and it's quite often. And a lot of people turn around and say, "Oh, well, I could never do that. I could never do that." And it's like, well, I hope that like what I'm championing is that anyone can do it. Like, I'm not. You're an average bloke. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> just an average Joe. I'm representing the everyman. And and like, if if it's surprising what can be achieved when you put your mind to it. Yeah. Hmm. Four and a half thousand kilometers, you said. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, and, and then I think the, and from where the, the I think Portland, the, Portland to oh, so that was from Banff in Canada. Oh, that's right. Yep. Yeah. So it goes uh, through um, Montana, uh, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico. To Mexico. Whereabouts in Mexico? Just oh, the uh, uh, oh, sorry, New Mexico. So it's New a, Mexico to the border, pretty much. Yeah, to they call it Trump's Wall. Yeah, right. Well, wow, that's some amazing scenery to ride through. To ride. That's like all the National Park um, it is, capital yeah. of the universe. Really. It is, all yeah. All those areas you just mentioned. Yeah, and like I was fortunate enough to visit Lake Louise oh. b- b- before starting, which is probably like one of the most photographed places in the world. I was talking about Lake Louise two days ago, I reckon, with mm. someone in the gym. With, um, um, who was it? Uh, Chanel, I think it was. Oh, yeah. Um, she was, um, she's gone to Canada and I was talking about the fact that um, my mate Leon, he mm. did, when, when a, we both went to school together 33, so it was, would have been for sure 10 years ago. He was living in um, Canada. Side note, mm. Leon was paid, he was 22, for somehow he got a job, he was paid by the AFL to mm. teach young Canadian kids how to play footy. That's what he did over there for six months. He just went around to schools kicking the footy with these little kids. Trying to like scope out like hidden talent or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. just trying to promote the game internationally, I guess. Yeah. Not even talent-wise. They were like, from what I remember him telling me, primary school kids, just trying to grow the sport and the awareness of it, I guess. So, mm. um, Which does end in more people playing it and talent, and idols, yeah. I guess. But it was fascinating. But, but anyway, so Leon um, put up a photo when he was at Lake Louise, I remember it was it was probably like early days of Facebook because it would have been yeah. like 2008, 2009. It was one of his first profile pictures. I just remember being on Facebook and he put up this photo, just the typical like, you know, posy on that little wharf that they have. Yeah. And then it was right at the time when it must have just um, just thawed or yeah, yeah um, gone from being frozen over. It's because the trees on the side of the mountains and stuff were all frosted with snow still yeah, yeah but the lake was the lake it wasn't ice and he took a he took the photo just a regular photo put it up as his profile picture and i remember reaching out to him straight away i said mate where the fuck are you <laughs> tell me right now um and since 
Or is, or is that a Bob Ross painting or something like that <laughs> yeah, that you've just photo dropped yourself in front of? That's yeah. right. <laughs> I, um, I couldn't believe it. it. Since that day, it's been... India is the place I want to travel to most if you think of a country. But if, if you think of one actual place on the planet, mm. I want to go to Lake Louise, number one, I reckon. Yeah. Since that day. Crazy. It, yeah, it's pretty cool. What time of year were you there? Well, it was just before the summer solstice, which is when... So, like, the race started on June 14th or something like that. Yep. So, and it's amazing, like, because you can hike all the little mountains off to the side and even up the top of those, it's still snow. Like, yep. Yeah, for sure. it's still pretty icy. For yeah. sure. Unreal. So, what are some of the... Um, so, this is this, uh, this race that you just competed. What's the name of it again? Say it again. So, that's the Tour Divide. Tour Divide, yeah. Yeah, right. and it's the, the route. So, it's a fixed route. It's called the Great Divide mountain bike route and a lot of people hike it as well so they have the continental divide so people will take six months off work and just hike the whole thing as well yeah um that's insane so what are the like how does this rank on um, one of the questions that i wanted to ask basically was i wanted to know what the wildest races are worldwide in endurance oh, yeah. cycling so like where does this rank and like what are some of the ones that mm. you might know of that are that are the most intense the, the most crazy yeah well they've got um i will call the tour divide the granddaddy of them because oh really because it's been around the longest full on so that's the number one really kind of yeah probably the one that everyone wants to do most kind of yeah in participation yeah and like size and stuff and that was the first time you did it correct yeah. oh you must have loved it that's great yeah but a lot of people come back year and year on yeah yeah and stuff um we've got it's, they're all kind of broken down into universes, like with social media and stuff. So stuff pops up, but it's quite often stuff will come up slightly outside of your universe and reach and stuff. So you might not, it, something might exist, but you might not see it. Mm. And it's event, it's kind of like, even talking back to the gym and stuff, there might be like a crew of people or something that might just be outside the bubble. Like yep. uh, uh, of where you, of social media that you operate, so there could be someone doing very something similar, but you might not ever know about it because they're yeah. out, outside. But the stuff that I see in, we'll call it my bubble, um, is they have, they've got one at the moment that is so difficult that they've only really had one or two people finish, and there's currently only one person. I think still racing at the moment. It's called the Terra Australis. So it's from, for Australian listeners, it's from the top of Cape York to Wilson's Prom. Oh, really? So it's the length of Australia, but a lot of it is like sand and stuff. It's Terra pretty, that, that's in, insane intense. Um, I'm preparing for next year and it just finished as well, which hopefully it kind of ties in with work and whatnot. Uh, the, Silk Mo, the Silk Road Mountain Race. Oh, that sounds like so that's, cool. So that, that's quite short compared to stuff that I've done in the past, only 2,000 kilometers. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, so, it's so remote and, and it is made up of mountain passes, but they don't have trees there. So, you're so is that like Siberia or...? Uh, uh, it's called Krezestan. So it's in between... Krezestan? Yeah. Or I'm pronouncing it Krezestan or it's... I keep, Kyrgyzstan? Kyrgyzstan, that's Kyrgyzstan, right. Kyrgyzstan, yeah. Always yeah. my Australian <laughs> Ocker thing. It is definitely Kyrgyzstan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. between, yeah. There's a lot of stands that I don't know about, so it could be one. <laughs> yeah. you know, I don't really know. That, there's so many stands I don't even know <laughs> where they are. Um, so that's between China and Russia mm -hmm. on the Silk Road. Uh, so that just finished, but that was wild. Like, you know, I, I think they got like six hours in and that was already like blizzards and snow and it's oh. like intense heat when you're in the in the valleys and stuff. And there's no tree, like kind of like a bit different to Australia and America. There's no trees, mm. so you can't you can't hide. So you've got to like keep pushing. Far out. And they, yeah, that's really high on the list. The what about food at one like that? I feel like there'd be less truck stops and like, yeah. Well, they have a thing called, stores, called a yurt, yeah, which is like a fabric tent, and um, yeah, just kind of drink goat's milk and bread, <laughs> bread and jam. That's kind of what they. <laughs> that that's kind of like. The diet in Kyrgyzstan. You're a psycho. 